Hello, this is Jack with Gadget Factory, and welcome back to part four of uh, the screencast showing how to debug internal FPGA logic with the OpenBench logic sniffer. Okay, so where we left off is we have just modified our bitstream with uh, probes. We created a new bitstream with these probes to probe internal logic. We loaded the bitstream, and now we're setting up the logic analyzer client so that we can capture the data and take a look at it. Okay, uh, now, so this is the how we want to set up the capturing, but uh, there is actually one more thing we want to do, which is we want to label, since we added the Rx line, we want to uh, add that label as well. So you go here, diagram, diagram labels, channel 8 is Rx, and it shows up there. Okay. So let's just double check that our trigger set. It is. We're going to hit capture. Uh, this shows that it's sitting there waiting for capture. And we're going to open up uh, a little tool to send. We're going to send this hex data. It's five zeros and one two. So let's go ahead and send it. That should trigger it. It did. And so what we see is let's count the read byte portions because there should be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that matches. We know that uh, we sent five zeros. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's what we expect to see on the RX pin. And we know the last thing we sent was a zero two. And just eyeballing it, the RX line, that's what I would expect to see. Uh, we could also just actually make it easier on ourselves. And this might blow up. I didn't test this before, but uh, let's just try this. Okay, so RXD is channel zero. Um, I think we need to, to say unused. Uh, let's just try this. Okay, yeah, I took a little time and uh, tried to make it work, but uh, probably shouldn't have gone down this route. Uh, I'm going to abort out of that. I think uh, we need to capture it at, at a higher speed to be able to decode it. So uh, maybe we can come back to that later. But anyway, um, we know that this is what we expect to see. And so we've got a frame of reference. The data we're capturing is what we probably expect it to be. So. Um, let's kind of go through the states next and to do that I'm going to capture it at a higher a higher speed uh, I did a lower speed just so that we could kind of get the overview and now if we capture it at a higher speed we can kind of really drill in and, and make sure that take a look follow along with our code and uh, see that it matches up with what we expect so I'm capturing at a 100 uh, we're not going to see as much we're not going to see the whole transfer, but we'll be able to zoom in and uh, look much closer. Okay, so I'm zooming in on each section. And I'm going to go back to the trigger. So basically, what we see is that we sat there in wait start, which is what we expected. And if we go back to our source code, okay, so the flow of how this should work is so we sit there and wait start. When we get a wait start, the next state will be a wait begin. Okay, so do we see that reflected in? our internal logic. So sitting in a wait start, then we transition to a wait begin and um, it's active high. So when it goes high, that means that state is active. So yes, that matches. Okay. So um, what do you, and actually I'm going to continue this in uh, part four.